Hi, welcome to Moo Math. Today we are looking at finding the surface area of an octagonal prism. This is actually a request from a viewer, so here you go. Okay, to find an octagonal prism, you're going to use the same basic formula as a hexagonal prism, two times the base area plus a lateral area. Because you have to account for the top base and the bottom base, that's why you're doubling your base area, and then your lateral areas, of course, the sides. And I've got a quick little demonstration. Remember that ooh, the paper's supposed to be folded into eight parts. If you have an octagonal prism and you're looking at the sides, if you open it up, it ends up, whoops, just being a rectangle. And that's why the lateral area is just perimeter, which is this part, times the height of the prism. So there you go. Okay, so let me give you some measurements. We're going to say the side is eight and the height is 12, and we know that it is regular, meaning all the sides are the same length. Now, what do we do with that? Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to find the base area, and we're going to double it. So let's slide down here and see how you do that. Okay, we have an octagon, so I'm just looking straight down on this, and I have got to draw a triangle in here because I need to find this apothem, right? That's my apothem from the center to the side, and when you draw that in, you get a right triangle. And because this is regular, it's actually going to bisect a central angle right here at the middle. So what I've got to do is I've got to take, well, 360 degrees, and I have to divide it by 8 to get that central angle. That means this angle right here is 45 degrees. But when I draw that apothem in, it cuts it in half, so the angle is 22.5 degrees. That's the angle we're going to be working with right here in our triangle. So let's go over here and draw in 22.5 degrees and we've got to get the base of this triangle and we've got to use trig to figure out our apothem. Okay, what do we know? Well, we know the side of the hexagonal prism is 8, so that means this side right here is 8, but I've cut it in half. So I'm going to use 4 for the base of my triangle. Now, I need to know this side because that's my apothem. How do I do that? I have to use trig. So let's see. I've got my angle is here. I'll call that angle, let's say, x. And this is my opposite, or let's call that y because this is my unknown apothem. Opposite and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent. So that means my opposite is 4 and my adjacent is unknown. My apothem is is my unknown. So for angle Y, I'm going to use tangent. Because remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 22.5 degrees is equal to 4 over my adjacent or my apothem. And they both happen to be A's. So let's call that A. Okay, let's figure this out by taking the tangent of 22.5 and that gives me 0. 0.4142 all over 1 is equal to 4 over A. And then I do a cross product here. So I get 4 is equal to 0. 0.4142 times A. And then I'm going to divide by 0. 0.4142. Divide by 0. 0.4142. So use my handy dandy calculator and I'm going to take Four divided by 0.4142 and I get 9.657 so let's say 9.7 let's round that off to our closest tenth the apothem is 9.7 okay now let's go back and draw that in over here so that is 9.7 okay how's that going to help us Let's go up here and look. Well, we have to do one half AP, where A is the apothem, P is the perimeter. So one half the apothem, which is 9.7 times the perimeter. Okay, what's the perimeter of this base? Well, one side is 8. I have 8 sides, so 8 times 8 sides gives me 64. So that's my perimeter. And then I'm going to double that. Whoops, 64. And then once I multiply all that out, remember I have two bases, so i got to do times two, or you can just not multiply by half to start with if you just want to cancel that half out. Okay, so let's clear that. I'm going to take my 9.7 times 64. And that means my base areas are 620.8. Okay, now I need to get my lateral area. And that's that side when I opened up that 
piece of paper that gave me my lateral area. So what's the formula? It's the perimeter times the height. We just figured out the perimeter. We had eight sides and they measured eight each. So my perimeter is 64. Now what was the height of this prism? Well the height is 12. So I'm just going to take 64 times my height of 12 and that is going to give me my lateral area. So you can see the lateral area is the easy part. 64 times 12 and that's going to give me 768 for my lateral area. Now let's go back up and put it all together. So what, let's see, I did perimeter times the height and that gives me 768. Now let's add to that, so let's add to that our 620.8 and that gives me, ooh, it's hard to see that isn't it from your angle, that gives me 1,388.8, 1,388.8 square units because it's area and that's how you'd find the area. Now a couple helpful hints when you're doing an octagonal prism. Your central angle is always going to be 45 and when you slice it in half you're always going to use 22.5. If you have any other shape besides an octagon, let's say a pentagonal prism, let me just flip this over and talk about that one. The base area, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to draw from the center to the to the vertex and then draw the apothem in. But this time your central your little angle right here is going to be different. You're going to take 360 divided by 5 to get the central angle. So let's see. Whoops. You're going to take 360 divided by 5 and that gives you 72. And that's the whole central angle, right? 72. But then you got to split it in half. So divided by 2. That means that central angle you would work with would be only 36 degrees. So the triangle that you would work with would have an angle at the top of 36, okay, and then you would have half of the side of the pentagon. So in each of those different shapes you just have to find the central angle and then half it and then work with your trig ratio. And the trig ratio you're going to use given this, if you know the side, let's say in this case the side was 10 of the uh, pentagon, that means you'd use 5 for the side of the triangle and again, you'd use your opposite over adjacent and set it up as a tangent again. Hope this video was helpful on finding surface areas.